Hello and welcome to Ag Dealer TV. I'm your host this week, Scott Garvey. In 2017, Agco introduced its ideal combine to the world at Agrotechnica in Germany. A few months later, in 2018, the, com the combine made its North American debut at Canada's Farm Progress Show in Regina. Even though the combine's only been on the market a few months, well, a few years, Agco's already been making some changes and offering some new features to it. One of them it introduced this spring called AutoDock, the ability of the combine to connect to a header in just five seconds with the push of a button from inside the cab, you're ready to go to the field. I had a chance to talk to Josh Elcombe, Agco's Director of Engineering for Global Harvesting Electronics. We talked about a few things, including how artificial intelligence is influencing control arrangements in combines, and remember the ideal now has a joystick control instead of a steering wheel, but that's for a part two of this video which you'll see later on. Right now, take a listen to what he had to say about Autodoc and how that came to be a feature on ideal combines. So was Autodoc meant to be part of uh, the ideal concept right from the start, or when did that yeah, so uh, that's one of the features that came out with uh, um, the voice of customer early on. I mean, I would say, yeah, it, as early as maybe 10 years ago, customers started thinking about uh, making uh, making that process easier and having that want. Uh, in fact, I visited a couple of farmers yeah, probably 10 years ago that really had that, that idea in mind that had lots of very small fields so they kind of were maybe at one extreme of uh, of the farmers and and uh, as we evolved i guess i would say we we just encountered more and more asks for it so it became a part of the project back then uh, it was one of those things in, in terms of priority where we didn't roll everything out right at the very beginning um partially so we can get some some more extra validation on something that's such a, a critical uh, connection between the machine and the header um, and then yeah, partially so that we can we can grow you know with these features as we go along so yeah from the beginning it was it was definitely part of the plan to do it and you know whether it's sensors or control systems or the technology and and the customer i guess interest and excitement that's what all drove that into a final fruition here and now a launch into the market so. And it, this Autodoc is going to be available across all the ideal models. Yes, correct, correct. Yep, uh, yep. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Um, and then, of course, it's got the mechanical components that that go go with it, and and uh, the sensors that are that are required to do that that work as part of that. Um, but again, that it's. It, the connection part is is great. The you know five seconds to connect once you lift the header up. I mean that's that's really interesting stuff. And and happy to keep the the hands clean of the farmer any any time we can there and reduce that time. Uh, but the other piece of this that's that's the, kind of the added benefit for the overall day of the customer is kind of that reliability that that connection was complete. Uh, I think that we've seen failures, you know, we've seen um, issues that have happened in the field where maybe they didn't quite get that shaft connected all the way, or that electrical connection wasn't quite right, or the hydraulic connection maybe created a, a leak or something like that by not being completely connected. And we've got confirmation on the screen as well as just being able to connect that, that the user can actually, you know, engage his header with the confidence that those, those items are fully connected. So just kind of the added added feature, it kind of started with that piece too. I mean, that was that was another one of the asks from the customers was, you know, take out these these issues that can happen. I'm in a hurry, right? When I'm going into the field, I'm excited, I'm harvesting, right? Like this, it's a it's a stressful and exciting time of year. And sometimes, me included, we lose our focus a little bit sometimes. So good that we can add some reliability and durability into that system too. And it's going to be a Fenta exclusive. It's not going to be available on the Massey Combine. Correct. So in, in North America, the ideal machine is only available uh, with a Fent brand. And that's that's how it will uh, that's how it will roll out. Yeah. So in the announcement, it said that uh, third party headers are going to be compatible with the system fairly soon. And I noticed Agco just announced a partnership with a Germany based Gehringhoff a header manufacturer. Is is that Gehringhoff header going to be compatible with Autodoc? That uh, the timing on that's probably subject uh, to uh, to change a little bit, but yeah, there's certainly 
the first on the list in our in our sites for sure on on uh, additional headers. We we take a look at that part of it, but we also take a look at where the volume is, uh, right? What what's going to impact the most customers, the most farmers, and and improve their lives as quick as possible, and who's going to really be asking for it too? So uh, we can probably think of those competitive, you know, third party headers that are in the market besides Gehringhoff that will also have an ask and a strong, yeah, excitement for for the feature. I assume that those companies have already been in touch with Agco and you're already working on developing that now. Uh, some of the North American manufacturers. Yeah, we're certainly in, certainly in communication. Yeah. Yep. We, uh, both sides have a, have a potential to benefit there and, and, uh, yeah, we, we look forward to that. So assuming another header manufacturer comes on online, um, would that just be a digital update for the computer in the ideal to, uh, to have that, because I noticed in the press release, it says simply a touch of the, the computer will automatically recognize the brand and the man, and the size and everything. So would that just be a download to allow that to? Well, the, uh, at this point, those, that touch of the button piece of it does involve the, kind of the first, um, first connection for that header to that machine. Then when the user saves all that information, so they save the header with the header size, the, the type, the configuration, really. I mean, there's so many different real diameters as just another example and, and uh, drive types, et, et cetera, uh, that we, we know we can't control what, what sensors are on those competitive headers and where they are. Uh, so we have to kind of work within our boundaries there. And some of that is that manual in, yeah input in from the customer side. But then once they have that completed, then anytime they connect to that header, select that one, then they, they should be able to make that connection. Um, so yeah, it, it, that's the other piece of this too, is that there is some variance based on uh, drive shafts, hydraulic connections, electrical connections uh, that we, we're getting more standardized as the as we go forward, um, but we still also have to understand. You mentioned earlier the discussion with those third party uh, companies. That's who we've really got to get in in touch with and in deep with, so that we can make sure that we have that connection kind of end to end uh, and get some validation on it before our customer our customers see it. So is that drive connection? Is that something like ASABE is looking at standardizing all across all brands, like from the combine to the header that that connection or is that going to still be a brand thing? Yeah. So for the time being, as far as I can see it, it's going to be a brand thing. It has absolutely been in the discussions. I've it's, it's been a, a couple of years now, but I've been in some of those discussions with those groups. And I think mm -hmm. there is, you know, each brand has, has a reason for wanting to keep what they've got and maybe a little bit of a reason for commonizing. Uh, but uh, as far as I can see right now, we're probably going to still have that, um, kind of that mismatch in, in the industry from color to color.